trying to think. I mean, the list is crazy. Uh, Ace Solos I've gone through. Um, this summer, just testing and trying a bunch of different booths. Uh, so today, let's get to it. I've got a new booth that I want to show you guys, and I'm, I'm really hopeful that this is going to be a winner. Um, today, we've got Crispy Boots, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is the Wyoming 2 GTX. So this is the shorter version of the Idaho. This is the second version, or the newest version of this boot um, that just came out this year. There's not a lot of reviews on this boot on the internet, and that's kind of why I'm here today, is to hopefully give you guys some insight as to what I like about this boot. Um, I've already tried it on and wore it around the house for a few minutes, but I'm super impressed with what it looks like. So let's open this up and take a look at what we've got. These things are really, really impressive. So the boot itself is fairly weight, lightweight. Um, I would compare it very much to the Solomon Quest um, as far as weight-wise. Um, it's heavy, but it's not unnecessarily heavy. Um, one of the things that I've tried Crispy Boots in the past, um, some of the higher higher end versions, the full leather versions, um, and to be honest, they're, they're still too stiff for my feet and they don't have enough cushioning up support. One of the things that really attracted to me to this boot this year is that uh, Crispy listened to their customers. They made this boot last year and it was a little too stiff. So they changed the sole. It's a little bit softer this year. It's got a little bit less flex, uh, or a little more flex than the previous version. Um, they changed some stuff on the uppers here. And I'll tell you what, I am super, super impressed so far with this boot. Um, if you can see, the traction looks pretty sturdy. It's not crazy lugs, but still got the stickers on. It looks pretty good. I'm pretty excited about what I think this boot can do for it. Um, the things that I look for in a really good boot are obviously ankle stability is probably the number one thing for me. I want a boot that's not going to flex a lot from side to side when I'm side going. So ultimately, that's going to have a lot of fatigue on your feet. You might end up spraining your ankle anyway. Um, and it's just painful when you're side going in the woods when you have a boot that doesn't have that stiffness. This is by far probably one of the stiffest. Actually, I'm, I'm going to go out on a, on a branch and say this is the stiffest. Um, kind of a mid top, so this is a low top boot. It's not, it's not you know, the higher boots. Non leather, so a synthetic based boot. I mean, this thing is incredible stiff. This this lacing system, this material that they've got here, I mean, it really pairs up well with the stability of this boot. So that's the first thing I'm really excited about. The second part of it is the sole. Um, and you get a lot of the boots, especially like the sales, they just don't have much foam in the forefoot. That's where I get the majority of my pain is right in the in this area of my foot and it's always my right foot for whatever reason but a lot of boots don't have kind of that soft EVA foam up here up front and this foam I mean it's not on a scale of one to ten I'd say it's like a five uh, some of my lighter boots like I would say I'd say it's very similar probably to my Veritus maybe a little softer uh, but the boot itself is actually a little stiffer than my Veritus you can see it doesn't flex a whole lot um, and I like that about it in that it's a low boot with a fairly soft midsole and it's still pretty stiff like it's going to loosen up as we break in and hike in these boots uh, but I'm really really impressed with the layout of this boot I mean it's just these guys know what they're doing and this is by far the nicest synthetic like hiking boot hunting boot that I have seen I've come across on the market um, and price range wise, this thing isn't that bad. I mean, they're expensive, no doubt. Uh, but you get what you pay for. And when it comes to boots and my feet, that's the one thing that and, and sleeping, like if your feet aren't comfortable in the woods, like you're just gonna be miserable. So take a look at these boots. Um, I'm gonna do an after review probably after I get a chance to hike some miles in these things and see what I like about them. That's if I decide to keep them. I'm pretty excited about this boot. I think I'm probably going to end up keeping them. And, uh, and yeah, stay tuned. And if you guys have any questions, make sure you hit me up in the comments. I'd be happy to answer, but really happy with these. The one thing I want to add real quick um, is the insoles. So the insoles in almost 99% of the boot manufacturers today are junk. They're just worthless. And you think you'd spend $400 on a pair of boots and the manufacturer would go out of its way to maybe put some effort into a decent insole. 
Um, I think part of the reason is because there's a lot of insole companies out there and you can really customize what you're looking for as far as an insole. Me personally, I need arch support and I need cushioning, um, especially in that forefoot. These are the type of insole that I use in my boots. I've been using these for years. I have literally 20 pairs of these. Um, I have them in every single pair of tennis shoe I own, um, running shoes, hiking boots, like just you name it, I've got them in their work shoes. These are great. These are the Soft Soul brand, and this is their Air Light Orthotic. Um, it has the plastic orthotic right here, which gives you that um, a little bit of that arch support. It's got gel cushion up here in the front. This is the thickest gel cushion insole I have found to date. Um, that holds up for the type of hiking and hunting and demands that I need. Um, and then it's got like this little air compression, or not compression, but like a little air area, kind of like the old Nike shoes in the back, um, which I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's kind of rounded up right here and that air goes right into this air compartment. Um, I would say that's my least favorite part about these insoles. In fact, I wish they would just do the gel on the, on the back here instead of this air, because eventually this air, from hiking, it'll start to leak and this will go flat. Um, I have to replace them fairly quickly. They're not terribly expensive. I think they're like 35 bucks on Amazon or something like that. Um, but anyway, just wanted to show you that. It's a great product. I love using it. Something to consider for you guys. Again, nothing against crispy, but the insoles are just junk in these boots. Um, if that's something that doesn't bother you guys, and a lot of people are big on super feet, whatever, um, make sure you try something. But otherwise, Pretty happy with the boot so far. We're gonna test it out on this hunt and I'll get back to you. Thanks for tuning in, guys. So welcome back. And um, this is a follow-up of the boot review of the Crispy Wyoming uh, version two. So yesterday I uh, made a video for you guys kind of showing you the first look at this pretty new awesome boot by Crispy. Um, good news is that last night I actually killed a bull um, when I was hunting in this boot and so i've got a, a little bit better of an update so i put on about 12 miles uh, yesterday afternoon last night um, killed an awesome six point bull here in montana and um, unfortunately i wasn't wearing the boot when i shot the elk but it's it's extremely dry this year we've got incredibly dry conditions um, in this particular part of montana we haven't had any weather we haven't had any storms um, for about three weeks in fact we had one rainstorm three weeks ago um, that lasted like half a day and the ground is incredibly dry it's incredibly crunchy um, and last night putting the moves on some bulls um, I, I ended up taking my boots off and hiking for about four miles without shoes on putting a sneak through the timber um, arrow to bull um, but realistically um, the most important part was is i packed out the bull wearing these boots and, and I've got some really good first impressions. So the thing I really like about these boots is they are considerably stiffer than my um, Schnee's Beartooth 2 boot, which at first is not something that I overly wanted in a early season bow hunting boot, um, just because I want to be able to be quiet, I want movement. Um, but that being said, I felt like I could still get around the timber pretty well with these boots. Um, it was just the, the conditions last night. There isn't a boot on the market. In fact, I was I was walking in my socks um, for 4.3 miles last night, and it was it was loud walking in my socks. So there isn't a boot on the market that would have done well in those conditions. Um, so that's not at fault of the crispy. I'd have taken off whatever boot I was wearing regardless. Uh, but the things I really like about this boot is it has a wider toe box than normal boots. I don't have an exceptionally wide foot. Um, I would say that I have a normal foot. I don't wear wide boots, um, but this has a wider toe box. And I actually like that for two reasons. First of all, it gives me the volume inside the boot to put in those insoles that I showed you. Um, and in fact, it, it gives me the volume to wear a heavier sock with those insoles. So come cold weather, I can put on a little bit warmer of a sock if I want to. And then the other part I really like about a wide foot box is that when you're doing a lot of miles, especially if you're hiking a lot of up and down, um, and especially downhill, your foot's gonna swell and your foot's gonna widen out. And this boot gives your foot the room to do that. Um, and so I was really impressed with that. I like having the extra room in the toe box. And it's roomy enough that 
it's comfortable but not sloppy. Like I had no problems walking in my heel. I didn't get any blisters. Um, the pack out last night, I got done at 3.30 in the morning uh, packing that bowl out. It took three trips. Um, and thankfully, uh, this boot is just, man, I was in a lot of uneven terrain. There was rarely any trails. Um, and a lot of times I actually rolled my ankle like three times. And I say rolled my ankle in that like I stepped wrong and had I not been wearing this boot, I probably would have had a pretty serious injury um, just because the stiffness of this boot really saved me. And I'm incredibly thankful for that because when you've got a 90 to 100 pound pack on with meat and you step wrong and you roll that ankle, that's a really serious injury. In fact, I've done that. Um, I've injured all, tore all the tendons in my, in my ankle and in my, all the way up to my kneecap once carrying a big heavy bull out. And it took me three years to recover from that injury. So having a boot that can prevent that injury is really critical to me. Um, I, the two complaints that I have is I didn't feel like this boot breathed as well as I was hoping it would. Um, it's definitely a fairly hot boot still which was something that I was really looking forward to um, getting out of the all leather boot style. Um, I would say that it probably breathed a little bit better than an all leather boot, but realistically, it just didn't breathe as well as I was hoping to. Um, and that being said, it, it may break in, it may get a little bit better. The other part of it is it was 70 degrees yesterday and I was wearing what I consider to be a mid-weight merino wool. Today I got on lightweight merino wools and I'm gonna try those. Um, and, and that could have been a problem because I just had too heavy of a sock yesterday. Um, and then the last complaint that I have, which is not a big one, is that the lacing system is kind of a pain. Um, it's not terrible, but for a boot that's in the $400 market, there are so much better grommets out there that you can get. Um, I found that I had to, to re-tighten the laces. Um, so basically I hiked in after my first trip out, um, I hiked in and you know finished cutting up the bowl, loaded up another pack full, and by the time I was like hiking out, I needed to, to re-cinch up the boots, which is fairly common. I just felt that um, on a couple occasions yesterday, the, the lacing was, was loosening up on me. Um, and they was double knotted. So, you know, it's just one of those things where it's not the end of the world, you gotta relace up the boots, which sometimes you should be doing anyway. You wanna loosen up the toe box if you're gonna start going downhill, tighten up your, you know, your ankle support if you're gonna start cycling and going uphill. So, uh, overall, I'm really happy with this boot. I am obviously keeping this boot. Um, I think it's gonna break in really nicely, and that's the last thing I can tell you. Although I did 12 miles in this boot yesterday, and I packed out an entire elk, uh, it was incredibly comfortable. I had no problems with my feet. Uh, my feet weren't sore. Um, I didn't get any blisters. But I can tell you, if I did, if I'd have done like 30 days, if I was on a backpack trip right now, my feet would be pretty sore. You definitely want to break in this boot appropriately. And I think once it breaks in, it's going to be an incredible trip. Uh, that being said, it's already a great trip. Um, and last thing I want to say is, if you're the guy that's looking for an everyday, you know, just an evening hunt, morning hunt kind of boot. I don't know that I would go with this. Um, it's, like I said, it's a little hot and it's a little stiff. Granted, great for packing out. If you kill something, throw this boot in the truck, so you can pack it out. But if you're gonna be on a backpack hunt, an extended day, three, four, five, seven, ten 10-day hunt, um, archery season especially, absolutely this is the boot you gotta go with. I don't think there's a better boot on the market. So that being said, if you've got any questions, post them comments. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.